may be on spring break, but courts in session doesn't take a week off. The women's basketball team has a date with the Shockers on day one of the AAC tournament. Plus, the men are headed straight to the quarterfinals. Courts in session is virtual and it starts right now. Hello and welcome to an unfamiliar version of Courts in Session. We couldn't take a week off, so that means we go virtual. I'm Emily Cochran alongside Brielle Berry and Luke Milai. It is officially tournament time for both the men's and women's basketball teams. The women will be the ninth seed in the tourney, while the men finish fifth in the AAC after a loss to Tulane to end the regular season. The men looking to pick up a win a heading into the AAC tournament. Cook. This Cook. was a close Cook. one heading down the stretch. Cook. Temple's Jalia White has it on the Cook. perimeter, Cook. passes it to Cook. Nick Jordan, who gives it to Jamil Cook. Reynolds Cook. down low. Reynolds kicks it out to Zach Cook. Hicks, who drives Cook. middle and knocks down the two. Tulane basketball. Kevin Cross has it, and look how far off Reynolds is. He is daring him to shoot the basketball. Cross drives middle and attempts the two, but misses. Al's down three with less than a minute remaining in the second. Damian Dunn brings it up court, looks to tie things up at 81 on this three, but Dunn misses, but he is fouled, which means three shots for the guard. Dunn goes one for three from the charity stripe, but Korjan Cooch is the team's savior and gets the offensive board for the Owls. John Cooch finds Dunn in the corner and he sinks the three to put the Owls up by one. Tulane ball and Nick Jordan commits the foul to send the green wave to the free throw line. Temple has a chance to end this ball game. Reynolds gets it to a cutting jolly white, but white is blocked. Temple loses this one 83 to 82. One point separated the Owls from putting another win on their record, so now it's officially tournament time for the men. Fort Worth will welcome Temple to its very own Dickies Arena. The Owls are set to play Cincy on Friday for their first matchup. The Owls went 1-1 one one against the Bearcats this season, with each team winning at home. Temple beat Cincinnati back on January 1st in a team effort with five guys scoring in double figures. The Bearcats got revenge in late February winning in overtime over Temple in Ohio. Damian Dunn led all scores in that game with 34 points. This matchup will take place in round two of the tournament, thanks to both teams earning first round buys. It's the second straight season that Temple has earned a buy in the AAC tournament. I'm thinking about this game, which matchup do you think will have the biggest impact on the game? I think one of the biggest matchups of this game is whoever is guarding Temple's big man, Jamil Reynolds. He will likely be guarded by Victor Lockin and Odie Oguama. Reynolds had 11 points in the team's most recent game versus Cincy, so I expect him to put up a fight down low in the quarterfinals. Lockin and Oguama are comparable to Reynolds in height, but the big man is much more solid than those two. Now, for me, the first thing that comes to mind is Damian Dunn hitting his 1,000th career point against Cincy. And in that game, he also finished with 34 points. But in these last few games, he has also been a bit inconsistent on the offensive side of things. So I'm looking at who will be defending him. Now, depending on who's on the court, it's going to either be Mika Adams-Woods or Jeremiah Davenport, both very strong defenders. So it's going to be important for Dunn to stay composed and fight against the contact that will likely be thrown at him. You looked at an offensive player. I'm looking at defense. I'm looking at Jaleel White against Cincinnati's Landers Nolly. I keep thinking about how the last game ended. Landers Nolly scored nine of his points in an overtime win over Temple. That was when Jaleel White was sidelined with an injury. He was on the bench, not out there to stop Nolly. When White was in the game earlier, he was three for three. He had eight points. He was stopping Nolly. He was doing everything right. I think whoever gets the best of this matchup when White plays defense and gets a few hoops, the Owls will be on the right track. The teams did split the season series. Will anything from the prior matchups be similar? 
Well, who knows? Maybe we'll see another overtime game against these two teams. The Owls are 2-3 and three when it comes to overtime wins on the season. So if this were to happen, Temple should definitely be on the lookout for Landers Noli. The 6-7 senior scored nine points in overtime in the last matchup back in late February, showing that he performs well under pressure and when it matters most. And that's something that the Owls are definitely going to need to be on the lookout for. So last time these teams played, Damian Dunn dropped 34 points, and the next closest scorer was Heisen Miller, who finished with 13. Temple's going to need a lot more contribution on the offensive side of the ball this time around, but since he has a lot of options on offense, David DeJulius, Landers Miller, and Jeremiah Davenport, just to name a few. Temple's going to have to really lock in defensively in this Friday afternoon matchup. And Brielle, earlier you mentioned that offensive output. I'm looking at the long ball for the Owls. Against Cincinnati this season, Temple hit eight three-pointers in the first matchup and ten in the second matchup, including Zach Hicks, Damian Dunn, Heisier Miller. They all had three-plus three-pointers in the most recent matchup. Temple is a good three-point shooting team. Cincinnati is susceptible to giving that up. I'm looking at Temple's long-range shooting in this one. All right, last question. If the Owls are going to make a deep run in the AAC tourney, who needs to step up for Temple? I've been talking about him all season long, and I'm going to continue talking about him. Jamil Reynolds is someone I want to see step it up on the yeah, offensive side of the ball. Yeah. Reynolds is averaging just about nine points per game, but I really want to see him contribute heading into the tournament. With his size and his skill set, he should be absolutely dominating down low. No one should be able to stop him defensively, so if you are a Temple guard and see Reynolds' chest and numbers down low, feed him the basketball. That's a good one. I'm going with Zach Kicks. When the season wound down and Caleb Battle wasn't in the lineup, Everyone in the gym knew that Damian Dunn was the Owls' go-to scorer. But what they've been lacking is that secondary guy. Who's going to step up and be that number two scorer? I'm looking at Zach Kicks. He scored double digits in seven of his last eight games, so he showed that he's capable. But I think the Owls are going to need 15 to 20 points out of him. They're going to win against Cincinnati. Me, it's going to be High Seer Miller. His four game streak of scoring in double figures was broken on Thursday's game versus UCF. So I'm looking for him to have a bounce back game in the quarterfinals against the Bearcats. When Temple played at Cincy last, he had 13 points, and I expect him to have a bigger role heading into Friday's game versus Cincy. Being the floor general of the team, he's going to need to be smart with the ball and limit as many turnovers as he possibly can. Temple's not the only team heading to Fort Worth to play in the AAC tournament. There will be 11 teams squaring off in Dickey's Arena for a chance at the championship title. We've made our picks for the tourney. Brielle, start us off. Kicking things off with some tournament predictions, I have ECU, UCF, and Wichita State escaping the first round. In the quarterfinals, I think Cincy is going to beat Temple, and it should be no surprise that I'm picking Houston to defeat ECU. Coming down to the semifinals, I think Houston and Memphis will come out victorious, which puts them in the title game. I'm shaking things up and picking the Tigers to defeat the Cougars. Houston narrowly defeated Memphis on Sunday, and I think it's revenge time for those Tigers. I don't have any big upsets in the men's bracket, but I do have some smaller ones. Round two is all the higher seeds winning, except the five seed Temple Owls beating the four seed Cincinnati Bearcats. But once we get past round two, I'm riding with the favorites. Houston won't let Temple repeat history, and Memphis will take care of business against Tulane. In a rematch of last season's final, I've got Houston winning it all. It'll be the third straight year that Houston has won the conference tournament and the fourth straight time they've made the final. My predictions look very similar, no big upsets in the first round, but into the quarterfinals, I needed to spice it up a little bit, but keep it safe at the same time. I have the Shockers shocking the conference with a win against Tulane just to make things a little entertaining, but not too entertaining to the point where we don't see Memphis and Houston in the championship game. I've got the Cougs going all the way, three-peat loading for sure break time that's enough talk about the men's basketball team when we come back we will recap the women's most recent match of versus smu and look ahead to the tournament as the team prepares for a first round matchup against the shockers of wichita state
And it's time to get into the women's side of things. They have a shocker to worry about on Monday night. But first, let's recap Temple's senior night win against SMU to finish out the regular season. It was senior night for one solo out as Temple welcomed the Mustangs of SMU to the Leah Core Center Thursday night. Aaliyah Nelson dishes it to that solo senior Brittany Garner for one of her five field goals on the day. SMU with the ball now getting the rock inside to Jessica Peterson who scored 19 of SMU's 23 points off the bench. In blue, Jasmine Smith thinks she has an open look, but Coranda Perea says nope, knocking it out of bounds. Now a three-point game with just over 90 seconds left. Smith with the ball again, loses possession. Brittany Garner causes the turnover and gets it to Nelson who throws a dart to Tierra East for the two-point layup. She had a game-high 21 points. This one sealed the deal. East causes another takeaway and moves the ball down the stretch herself. Temple upsets SMU in blue 68-62. The women's team is set to take on Wichita State on Monday at 2 p.m. in the first round of the American Athletic Conference Tournament. Wichita State is the eighth seed and Temple is the ninth. This game will be played at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. The Shockers and the Owls have split this season and this game will be streamed on ESPN+. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the game. What matchup do you think will have the biggest impact on Monday? T.R. East for Temple and Trajansa Colbert for Wichita State. This matchup played a big role in each team's success against each other during the regular season. And Temple's win over the Shockers, East had 14 points and five rebounds. But when you look at Colbert's stats against Temple this season, she's averaging over 19 points and over eight rebounds. These two will be matched up a lot. Whoever wins this matchup will greatly influence the winner of the game. For me, it's going to be Tariana Gary. She is absolutely on fire right now, especially in the Owls' last three matchups, including the loss to Wichita State. In Temple's last three, she's averaging 14 points per game, over seven rebounds, and she's 50% from deep. Now, on the Shocker side of things, DJ McCarty, another 5'8 speedy player to watch out for. Although she scored a combined eight points in the last two games, she still averages 10 points per game. Both Gary and McCarty are similar in size, stature, athleticism, looking very similar from a courtside perspective. Jane Asinde is who I have my eyes on. She struggled the first time against Temple, putting up only eight points, but in the team's second matchup, she dropped 22, going nine for 16 from the field. And for the Owls, I'm looking at Corinna Perea to have a big game. In the first matchup versus the Shockers, Perea had 17 really points. Like she dropped 14 game, points Steve. versus Wichita State the second the time around. She struggled in the team's most recent game, so I do expect her to have a bounce back game in the opening round of the tournament. On to the second question, the teams split the season series. Will anything from the prior matchups be similar? This game is going to come down to defense, especially for the Owls. This season, they have struggled during the third quarter defensively, which does make sense considering the team has eight players on the active roster. If they can stop players like Ascende, Protesta Dean, and DJ McCarty, I think they can get a win in the tourney. First win against Wichita State was part of that three-game win streak they went on after losing Anaya Gordine and Jaysha Clinton from their active roster. They had momentum, winning by double digits for the first time since the conference opener in late December. However, when they lost to the Shockers towards the end of the regular season, Season, they looked like a completely different team. Sloppy defense and a lack of effort when it came to offensive rebounding. So this matchup could really go either way in my eyes. I always say the regular season matchups don't tell you much in terms of wins and losses in the postseason, but you can find trends that you can take from. Watch the rebounding battle in this game. In each game, these two teams played against each other in the regular season. Wichita State out-rebounded Temple by at least 14. There's going to be a lot of pressure on Tiara East, Enos Piper, Temple's top two rebounders to even things out in that department in the tournament. The Owls are going to make a run into the tourney. Which Owl do you need to see step up? I need to see Brittany Garner play the way she did against SMU in every single game I see from her. I get it. It's senior night. It's a big deal. She needed that outcome to end the regular season, but Texas in the tournament is an even bigger deal. Garner is an extremely powerful player. She just needs to watch her hands, play smart, and put up another double-digit game against the Shockers. The answer for this question would be Aaliyah Nelson, but I'm going to say Tariana Gary. Gary has scored in double figures in Temple's last four games, but there was a stretch of games during the season where she struggled putting up points. Gary is averaging just under 10 points per game, but I do expect her to step it up big time offensively heading into tournament play.
know this question's probably looking for a secondary player or a role player to step up, but I'm looking at the best player. Aaliyah Nelson has to step up. She's the team's leading scorer at over 15 points per game, but in the postseason, she has to explode in the points category. She hasn't scored 20 points in eight straight games, and she's coming off a four-point performance against SMU. As equal opportunity as this offense is, the team will not win a postseason game without Aaliyah Nelson scoring over 20. We did it for the men, so now let's do it for the women. 11 teams on the bracket. The Owls sit in the nine seed. Let's get into it. Luke, start us off. Right out of the gates, I have Temple beating Wichita State and advancing to round two. That's as far as they'll get before conference powerhouse USF ends the Owls' run. And in my bracket, defense wins championships. I have three of the top five defenses in the final four in ECU, USF, and Houston. In the end, USF gets back on its throne in the AAC after losing the championship last season. Give me a Temple win in the first round of the tournament. Yes, they only have eight players, but they are a tough team and will fight to the finish with Wichita State. Now, the quarterfinals, that's a different story. Temple would play USF in the second round, and I think the Bulls win that one big. I have ECU beating Memphis in the semis, which means that's the Bulls and Pirates in the championship game, and USF will take home the AAC crown. Listen, I've seen what bold predictions can do to a person from being on Inside the Nest with Luke, so I did play it safe when thinking about the women's side of things for this tournament. Nothing bold or brave on my end, unfortunately, but if we skip to round three, I do have Memphis beating ECU, which should be a tight matchup, but I don't think the Pirates will make it easy on the Tigers to get the job done. For the championship, I have USF going all the way. The last time they took home the conference trophy was back in 2021. That is all the time we have today for this virtual episode of Courts in Session. Make sure to follow along with all of our coverage of the men's and women's conference tournaments on our socials at Owl Sports Update. We'll be back on our regular Tuesday at noon schedule the week following spring break. For Brielle Berry and Luke Milai, I'm Emily Cochran. We'll see you all after an AAC champ is crowned.